Hi guys, I work for Auth0, that's kind of obvious. Uh, we are authentication providers and most of what I do is I talk to people about their auth questions and it's a pretty simple problem. But, you know, I like talking to people, so how many of you have an auth nightmare or a horror story or woke up in the middle of the night thinking that, you know, there was a vulnerability, something like that? Mostly what I talk to is, you know, I, I've heard this a lot, people overhype auth. And if, you, if you're over 60, which I took the wrong cloud, you probably remember a movie, Dr. Strangelove, which kind of describes my relationship with auth. I started at a company and the first thing they made me do is reinvent auth and that worked out really bad. So eventually, till the time I ended up at Auth0, I started loving the spec. So this talk is going to be more or less how you know, to not reinvent auth and how to just go ahead and use the spec. So if you can, you know, if most people could describe any app that you're making as the four fill in the blanks. Uh, the f first one is like, you know, it could be a PWA, it could be a native app, it could be a native script app, or it could be a hybrid app uh, where the user, client, customer, you know, whosoever maybe, it will they'll log in using their enterprise SSO, credentials, you know, depends to do your business model. Uh, by the show of your hands, uh, you know, just use fingers. Uh, how many of you think that, you know, which two are the most important uh, to auth? Do you think is the first fill in the blank where auth applies or the second one or third or fourth? Either one. If you think the first, raise your hand. Uh, if you think it's the second one, raise your hand. If you think it's the third one, raise your hand. And if you think it's the fourth one, raise your hand. So auth usually, you know, uh, is overcomplicated and I have had, uh, you know, usually I get more of one, two, three, four, 50, 25%. Uh, this time it's two, three, and four. Mostly how I see auth is, uh, you know, it's, it's only for me, it's how you identify the user and what the hell the user can do. You don't want your users to root delete your tenant. If anyone re remembers uh, the Reddit guy who nuked, the nuked his production database on day one, <laughs> that was bad auth. Good auth is something what Google does. Uh, no matter what I want, I cannot reset my own account password because they cannot identify me. It's just something I messed up. So. Basically, how we think of auth is authentication, who is it, and you know, authorization as in what are they allowed to do. And usually what I usually get is people try to do auth these three ways. Uh, they re-implement the entire thing. There are people I have talked to who have re-implemented the entire cryptography in JavaScript. I don't want to go in depth of that. Uh, there have been scenarios where you don't even want to touch the legacy code. And then there is, you know, you just copy paste. Which one do you think is the worst? The first, second, or the third? Good, first one is by far the worst. Second one, when you think about it, you're like, you know, uh, that you should not, you know, straight off copy paste uh, applications from Stack Overflow, especially auth, but auth has been a problem that has been solved times and again and again and again and again. And so, copy-paste isn't that bad. You, you should research as much as you can on auth before you try to rewrite your own scenario. And 99.9% .9 of auth scenarios could be written down in that one sentence. In fact, when we got in here, we got a token, and then we got access to the room. What is, you know, because I'm gonna be talking about OIDC, uh, just to give a brief overview, if you guys would, you know, go on the links and read up the specs right now. No, I'm kidding. It basically means you're gonna have a different server that's going to tell your application who the user is and what they're allowed to do. That's how we prefer to structure our applications. So for example, if you go to Google, Google will redirect you to auth.google.com where you will, you know, uh, enter your credentials and then it'll figure out that, hey, you're allowed to access the Google Admin Console or not. And this model usually scales really well. <laughs> so uh, what I'm gonna try to do is try to cram it down. 
in Angular terms, how not to reinvent the wheel. And usually, what we prefer doing is redirecting the user. So if, if you know, I was working, uh, you know, after checking out Native Script two days ago, uh, I did look into how you do OAuth, and you know, um, what usually you could do is from Native Script or Native Apps or JavaScript or even on something like a watch, you can you know open a web browser. That's usually the best way. Because when you are on a client device, you cannot trust anything. And usually it's the browser. Anyone remembers when trusting the browser used to be a thing? It is now, apparently. So some of you might wonder, why should you redirect? Well, the simplest advantage you get is uh, your authentication is not inbaked in your native app. And I'm talking in native app because you know, uh, it's something I like and uh, I have you know, shared a lot of time in. Uh, but I'm going to get back to Angular in a second. Basically, if your auth is blows up, say somebody finds a vulnerability, you cannot wait for users to update their application. You need to fix that at that time. So that's one of the major reasons why I recommend using you know, a redirect flow. So a lot of you might think it's not so user friendly. So I'm going to head straight to the demo and show you that it's actually slightly user friendly. Slightly. The term is slightly. Don't count on me on that. <laughs> uh, so let me open a Chrome tab. And please squint. Localhost 4200. I have a bunch of them. So. And this is my wonderful you know, uh, uh, designing skills. So if I click on login here, it will take me to a secondary endpoint, which is not centered. Oops. That way. There you go. You click on login with Google. Google figures out who you are. This is the authentication part. So if I click on Hugh Skypotter, which is my Steam name, uh, you'll go get on this page, and you'll be able to ping a protected endpoint. However, if I log out, and if I log in using uh, you know, one of my Auth0 account, well, my fingers are shaking a little bit. All right, so if I log in using my Auth0 account, you can see that there is another admin area where I can send an admin ping. And I'll uh, push all of this to a GitHub repository, so you can just you know, check out the source. It's not rocket science, it's just an express server, which is checking for a scope. I'm not going to go into the specifics, because that could I could talk on and on and on and on and on about it. But if you're uh, interested in knowing how all of the cogs and wheels, uh, wheels work, please feel free to hit me up. So how the hell did you know, all of that work? Uh, I want you to guess how many lines of code that entire thing was, including the server side. Seven. Just the implementation. Well, not seven. If <laughs> That would be too good. <laughs> Any more guesses? One? No. Round there, round there. Uh, it's Angular, remember. <laughs> round that. So we have an AuthGuard service, uh, and which extends the can activate, which comes straight from Angular. What we are doing is basically we are checking if the user is authenticated for the route to send the ping, or if the user wants to be you know, going to a wrong place. How this in, is authenticated method is implemented, oh my god, this screen is so tiny. Uh-oh. I have got myself stuck. OK. There we go. Right, so sorry about that. If I go to odd.spec, there are, you know, special there's a special method that we declare good old Angular stuff uh, is authenticated. And then you know, user has scopes. What user has scopes is doing is the authorization server tells you which scopes it gave the user. And you just basically, that's an array. And you check if the user has that scope. So for example, for the ping component, I'm checking if the user has the admin scope, which should be here, around here. No, I can't even see my code. Oh, there you go. That was correct. Uh, so what we are trying to check here is the, if the user has access to a bunch of scope, and then we mount it in our routes file. Uh, oh my god, this is horrible. Uh, if I mount it, in, if you see the routes file, it actually checks explicitly you know, what scopes are there. Where these scopes are coming from depends, again, on the token format you use. 
In auth zero's case, we use JWTs, and uh, there will be people who are familiar with it. There will be some who would want to throw a fork or a knife at me. Please don't. Uh, there will be people who love JOTs, too. Uh, but that's you know, beyond the scope of this talk. Uh, what I want to tell you is, if you could send these permissions to your application, it's not different at all. Because the same code translates to, on the server side, where you should be doing all the auth anyway, uh, to a very similar component. I wrote this plugin called connect ensure permission, which uh, you can actually pass a method to. Uh, so in this case, the method looks something like request, and it will actually fetch request. I'm, you, know, if you could actually do request.user.scopes, which is relying on using the express jot token uh, plugin, or I think it should be middleware. So what, what this is doing, in a sense, is it actually uh, populates user.scopes. And then you know, this method will then check if you have the permission. So if you remember the example from Angular, it was exactly the same. Basically, what I'm trying to say is a lot of these times I've heard people say that authentication is different per Angular, per, you know, per Express, per React they usually are the same thing. Authentication is a problem where you can divide in first, you get the access token, then you call the API. And the framework specific bits here were getting the access token, which we are using an Auth0 module, which uh, will handle the OIDC grant for you. Uh, so it's just a simple authorized call. Uh, but if you were to use OIDC.js, this code is gonna be very similar. What I'm trying to say is it's not very different. If I were to write the same plugin in native script, it's going to be maximum 20 or 30 lines of code chain. And thanks to Angular, it's going to be even, li even little because I could just in place replace the, the, the browser opening mechanism. Because here it's, you know, it's redirecting. In uh, native script, you would open a browser. In Cordova, you would open a browser. And we have examples for that. Uh, please feel free to you know, ping me on Twitter at underscore math.random, because math.random was taken. It wasn't random enough. Uh, I will be more than happy to you know, link you more universal examples and you know, um, help you, you know, figure out if you have any more authentication problems. Why I chose Angular 2 for this talk is Angular 2 theoretically allows you to write services which are specific to the platform. So native script, you don't necessarily change your business logic. Only the presentation layer changes. Uh, Cordova, or you know, if you're running it on uh, Ionic, mostly the presentation layer is also the same. What it allows you to do is deploy your code really fast, and I wanted to show, share an example of uh, you know, how much code you could share if you're trying to write uh, you know, auth as a problem itself. So, so to some of this uh, talk, there's a slide on how we did the auth guard, and if you fell asleep, uh, there's a too boring fell asleep slide. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Uh, and there's another bunch of links. Please feel free to ping me at Twitter, uh, which I think is in the meetup group. Uh, and thank you for joining. <laughs>